All right, we're live. What's up, guys? We got a special guest with us today. <laughs> Where am I supposed to look? I'm a newbie. Well, we're supposed to look right here, um, but the problem is the computer is down here. So okay. I apologize for that. I've I've been trying to figure out a good system. Um, if you use like your phone or your iPad, it's actually pretty decent. But um, I really like the camera quality of this. But um, what's going on? Thank you guys for jumping in the live stream today. We've got some really fun guests. Um, I wanted to, oh, I wanted to do something really quick before we uh, jump into the live. I just wanted to shout out a few people who are in the Start Selling Your Leatherwork Facebook group. Um, I put up, I, I did this last time and I had a lot of people that um, threw their names up. We've got some really awesome people in there. So let me hurry and pull it up. Um, what other updates do we have while we're waiting here? Um... Do you have any updates? No. Shipping updates? Hold on. Let me. Community group. This, I thought it would be right up top. Questions? Um, post. It'd be a post. Um, okay. Anyway, sorry, guys. We're going to bypass this. I should have had it ready. And by the way, I wanted to apologize to to uh, our guests as well, because this one kind of blindsided me a little bit. It came up quick Monday morning. I didn't have a lot of time to prepare this morning. So usually I communicate a little better and make sure everything's working, but um, they were super patient and uh, we made it work. But these are some really good friends of ours in the business. We love these guys so much. Um, it, they, they just have amazing uh, style and technique to their work and their products are so different from what you normally see in the leather craft world. Um, we've got Nick and Leanne from Hemlock and Hyde. What's going on, guys? Hey. Hi. Um, thanks for jumping in. I'm, I, I, knew I, I knew that I wanted to have you guys on at some point. It was just a matter of when do we do it? It's got to be a sweet spot. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what's new with you guys? You have a lot of new updates that are going on right now. I know with the hat pre-orders and uh, well, you got a lot going on. Tell us a little bit about what you're focusing on right now. Oh my God. We, we just launched pre-orders for hats today. It feels yeah. like it's already been a full week. Yeah. Since like, Woo! Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's crazy. And today we have to make sure we, cause right now that there's pictures of the hats on there for pre-order, but there's no pictures of anybody wearing them. So after this, we're going to run out to like the park that's by us and take a bunch of photos of each yeah. other wearing hats. <laughs> oh, killer. Yeah. And a model. Yeah. <laughs> and a model. You got to get Nick in there as a model. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, the, the, hats, the hats are kind of, um, they're a little androgynous. Like, couldn't a, a guy wear one of them, I, I think? Absolutely. For yeah. Sure. They're meant to go on anybody. They're not like, sex specific at all yeah i love it they're so good looking um the so what's like your usual process for launching a product because you guys always seem to have it dialed in and the pre-order thing is kind of different than what most people do like how do you guys go about launching something like that that's good because it doesn't always it doesn't always feel like we're dialed in um yeah so we didn't always do it this way, but we started doing pre-orders. I feel like the first time we did it, we did it with our spring, was it spring 20, 2019? No, 2019, 2019 maybe, yeah. collection. And we it was like not done right. We just launched everything at once and it was insane. And people like were like, this is, I think it was just too much for people to take in. Yeah. Um, so now what we've done, is, especially now that we've like built out our collection, we try to do like pre-orders for one design at a time and <laughs> just try to make it more simple. Um, yeah, so for the hats, we are doing a little bit differently than we normally do. Typically when we do a pre-order for bags, we do it for a month long, um, mm -hmm. which is incredibly helpful for us because when the orders come in, we know how much leather we need. And we can get an idea and like get that, you know, that leather ordered. I mean, typically we have like a back stock of leather always, but just to keep it, making sure we always have the leather in stock. And yeah, and we can batch properly, make sure we're right. as efficient as possible with our time. Yeah. Um, so it really helps us. Yeah. So this time, <laughs> hi. Yeah, we've got a visitor. I see. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so this time with the hats, we're doing a two week pre-order and that's just because we are working with a factory to make the hats and they're, I'm, you know, juggling all their orders that they have to do normally. We just needed to get it done as quick as possible so that the hats, the hats will actually probably ship out to people at the very end of November, beginning of December. So. Yeah, the pre-order thing is a cool model just because it eliminates a lot of the risk up front. And, and like you said, I mean, you know what to prepare for when you're ordering, you know, exactly. you know, all the, anything that could come up. So that's a good way to go. It's smart. Is it? Is it Taylor Stitch that does like yeah. the pre at the time and then they do their runs? Like that's that's what inspired us, I think, because like you said, it takes some of that risk off of our hands. And if something doesn't do well, we kind of know up front if people are interested or not. And right. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, it's kind of the same idea of crowdfunding, um, but you guys are just using your own platform, which I think is really smart too. I mean, I debated that. Like we did Kickstarter once a while ago and it did pretty well, but like, um, there's a lot of things that come with using a platform like that, like the extra fees and the, um, sometimes it's kind of hard to keep your messaging consistent and your brand consistent when you're using a platform like Kickstarter or something. So I think just using your own platform, your own email list, you guys already have a huge following. So I think you're, you made the right choice there. Yeah, it's been working really yeah. well with the bags. We figured why not give it a shot with the hats and, and see how it goes but yeah it's been super helpful it just like i said it helps us order the right amount of stuff and that we're not like overproducing or under and it helps us yeah. and going forward yeah yeah well tell us about the hats a little bit because i've i've been all over them like i love that you guys are well i don't i don't want to do any spoilers i want to hear hear from you yeah. like the materials you chose to use instead of going with like wool or beaver like all that kind of stuff i really want to hear your thoughts behind it yeah, I appreciate you asking. Nick is grabbing a hat to put on his head too. <laughs> so yeah, so we decided. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Looking um, good. So most hats that are like out in the world, I feel like, especially if you think of like fashion hats or whatever you want to, I don't really know what to call them, but um, they're mostly going to be wool. Um, and wool is a great sustainable material, definitely. But um, we were looking to go a little higher quality, a hat that's really gonna last you, you know, a long time. Um, so we were looking at the other options are basically um, rabbit or beaver or a beaver rabbit blend. Um, and that's the actual fur of the animal. And so beaver is like the absolute best quality that you can go with. It's like practically waterproof because if you think of a beaver like swimming through the water, their fur repels all the water. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it can be it can be sanded down to like a really fine finish. Super fine finish, yeah, yep. And um, and so that's like the highest quality you can go. Oh, yeah. And then just below that is rabbit. And we really like the idea of doing the rabbit because it's another byproduct of the meat industry. So right now, doing our leather goods, all everything we're making is a byproduct mm -hmm. of the meat industry. So we're taking something that would have otherwise gone to the landfill um and doing something really great with it and making it into a new product and you're doing the exact same thing with the rabbit fur whereas beaver they are actually killing the beavers to make the hats so i felt better personally about just going with the rabbit and it's super high quality it can again be sanded down really fine not as fine as a beaver but Whoa! it is it is much more fine and um it also repels water so wool the the way that it's like the, the well, yeah like the, the wool is like coarse and porous and like if, you're, if you happen to get caught in the rain like it's gonna it's gonna deform pretty much yeah so like this is stiff and it'll keep its shape um you shouldn't dunk it in water but <laughs> yeah, yeah you know it's a yeah. different material and we were really happy with the quality that we were getting with these yeah. so yeah that's that's beautiful yeah so we decided to go with the rabbit um and we're just yeah we're super pumped about the quality and then we started figuring out like the other details of the hat so the sweatband on the inside is a veg tan leather full grain oh cool so that's gonna get some cool patina as you wear it over time, huh? Yeah, and we went to we decided to go with the natural uh, color too. Like again, just like you said, it'll patina over time. Yeah, the oils from your forehead will kind of. Yep. You probably recognize these colors. These are Wicket and Craig colors. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so is that the, the English bridal? Yep. 
the leather band we decided to take from our leather that we have in the shop anyway mm -hmm. and make the leather bands uh, from the Wicked and Craig leather that we get. So, um, and then we added a little, like the stitching going down the center is like a metallic gold thread. And then I don't know how well you guys can see it, but there's like a little brass uh, plus sign. I, don't know I how love that. that. <laughs> and that for us is just to represent like the plus sign that's in our name. So yeah. Oh, I love fact, that. Yeah, and the fact that we're like adding to our line, so it's an addition. Yeah, I never thought I'd be a hat person, but like I'm finding myself just thinking, like, you know what? I should just wear hats all the time. Uh, you definitely should. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The styling. It is funny. You think back, like in the '50s and '60s, like especially with um, males. But yep. like hats were just a thing everyone wore. Like everyone had their one hat that was really special to them. They wore it every day. They hung it up when they got home or got to work and put it on as they commuted. It's a cool thought that like it just doesn't exist anymore. So I've yeah. always been a fan of that concept. Yeah, same. And it's just such a great like piece that makes you stand out, you know, and can give you a lot of confidence. That's how I've always felt about hats and wearing hats. Yeah. I know I feel naked not wearing my hat right now. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel that way. Like I'm like, uh, I don't feel like myself almost sometimes without it. So yeah. the difficult thing is you actually, you know, the owner of the factory. Right. So yeah, there's like a whole story about kind of like how we decided to work with the factory that we're working with too. So my love of hats goes really far back. <laughs> um, so in kindergarten, there was a kid named Justin in my class and we went all through like grade school and high school together. We graduated together. And in kindergarten, um, well, his so his family own a hat factory um, that's based in New Jersey, like 20 minutes basically from where I grew up. And when we were in kindergarten, we got to actually go, let me change that color too. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got to actually go on a tour of the hat factory. And I was like, in love. I just like walking in the factory and like smelling it and seeing all the machines. Oh, yeah and the steam and everything i was like this is amazing and we got to go home with an actual hat so that's actually where my love of hats started and then as you know this past like holiday season i was really starting to think about making hats just because you know we're constantly getting comments and questions about the hats that i wear on instagram and stuff anyway and i was like you know i should really learn how to make a hat even if i don't make them to sell it'll be like a fun you know how it is you just like to learn a new skill it's it's yeah. it's like that yeah so yeah. i asked yeah so i was like okay i need to figure out what i need to do that and i reached out to justin because i was like man i haven't talked to you since high school i was like but i'm thinking about making hats like can you point me in the right direction for like some hand tools and he did and he was so helpful and he just kind of said like, hey, you know, if you ever really want to make hats and you, you know, I know you're really busy with leather. Um, if you ever need any help, you know, we can help you. So just keep that in mind. I was like, oh, okay, that's awesome. Let's, I'll keep that in mind. So then over Christmas time, I, uh, Nick ordered me a bunch of hat making tools. I made my first like couple of hats and I was like, this is awesome. I'm so excited. This is something I would totally wear. Um, and I feel like our, our followers would be super interested in it. So then Nick kind of like <laughs> sat me down and gave me the talk. And he's like, you can't do everything by yourself. Like you're going to be fine. He's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's completely right. And yeah, especially going into the holidays, like, you know, it just gets nuts. It's just, it's such a time consuming process if you're making them that way. One at a time. Yeah. yeah. And it's a huge investment too, because you have to get, yeah like the blocks for every single size. head size yeah. that you're going to carry. Um, yeah. yeah, there's, there's, we would need a whole nother. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. We could add another basement onto this basement. Maybe. <laughs> that's, the, that's the hat basement. This is the leather basement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so after we had our talk, I was like, all right, I'll reach out to Justin, see what he thinks we could do. He, and he invited us up there yeah. and we got the tour and Brought me back to kindergarten. Brought you back to kindergarten. <laughs> and it was just so yeah. good. Using all the same machinery they did back, like, the turn of the century. Yeah. And, like, nothing's digital. It's all manual. It's just so, it's so cool. Yeah, every machine. Yeah. I, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. We've got your <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think you're real. Sorry, I, I don't want to interrupt you. I think you're 
really smart to go that. I mean, it's it's hard because like I think you guys are a lot like us, where it's really hard to let go of some of the creative aspects and the production and all that kind of stuff. It's really hard, but. Um, I am a big believer in like letting the people who are set up for that type of production, like let them do what they're good at. And, um, you know, and, and like, who knows, you guys will likely blow this up so big that you're going to end up like helping their factory. And it's like this, this like really cool symbiotic thing where, um, it's more like a partnership and, and they already have all the equipment and the tools and the process and everything. So, um, but but it is hard because people like us love to just sit in our basements and like work with our hands and and you know it's kind of therapeutic. But it's the balance of like trying to do it as a business and uh, as at a personal level, it's really hard to figure out where to land on that. It's funny. I think there's like a disconnect for people. Like I don't know why people assume that like you can make everything. Like yeah, like customers. yeah, and they're just like, well, how come you're not producing it on your own? And it's just it's it's a whole different type of time and money investment to do it that way. And yeah. it's not feasible if you want to like have several different types of products. Right. Yeah, it's true. And like, it was super important to me to learn how to do it oh, for sure. so that I understood all the processes and amount of time it takes to do everything and the skill it takes to do everything. So I feel like I'll still have all the, I mean, granted, if I were making hats every single day, my knowledge base and my skill would be much larger, but just knowing how to do all the steps myself by hand, I feel like is important to be able to like communicate the quality of the product that we're making too. So yeah, and I do, I do foresee like, you know, in the future, if this all goes well, doing like some one-offs where, you know, those are like hand creased perfectly, you know, like I'm just getting the open crown and starting from there or or just a fur body even and starting from there and doing it 100 percent myself and just one of a kind going on the site yeah. um, that, would, that would be cool yeah i i like the idea of having different levels you know you have like your production ones right. that are a little bit more a, a, approachable of a price point and then you could have some one-off customs that are just like you go all out no holds bar right and so one so, of the so like yeah, i want to see that and liner and that's just under with our um like a gold emblem. foil, yeah. And then we have all these silk vintage liners that we can add as an option too. Yeah, so those are all um, silk, vintage silk scarves. Like I have a giant collection of them. So we're offering, we are offering like some customization to the hats that we're doing here. Like, so the hats all come with a four inch brim, but you can get it cut down to whatever size you want. Oh, cool. Um, and then for an added charge, if you don't want to have the black liner, you can get a vintage silk liner, which is kind of like a surprise. Like I'm yeah. Gonna, yeah, I'll be pulling the silk and making the design decision based on the color of hat that you ordered. Um, That's cool. Yeah. And then the last thing we can do is flip the hat brim up. So all these are flat right now, but um, we'll have a flange and we'll be able to seam and bend and flip the hat brims up. Oh yeah, that's that's way cool. Yeah. Okay, so there is like there's some customization in, involved in all this yeah. thing. There, For sure. there is, yeah. Of course, you know I can't let go of everything. So. Yeah. <laughs> so the factory is basically doing like the prep work, like they're you know making sure the hats are the exact right size. Um, they're so they're blocking them, pouncing them, which just means sanding, mm-hmm. um, and they're sewing in our sweatbands for us. So, and then we, we're taking them from there and, you know, doing the last like customizations um, to finish off the hat. Yeah. Are you it's able so to cool. sew those bands on your, on your uh, Cobra? So I can. Um, my first hat, I did that way. Huh. It's not impossible. I don't know. I think I'm trying to remember. I think that I had already cut the brim down to three and a half. I don't know if I could sew a four inch Mm-hmm. brim in the cobra but i was able to do it with a three and a half inch brim. yeah those machines have like a long arm that they, yeah, and this, they're like tilted yeah the special at, at ones the are like, at the factory yeah, yeah to sew the bands in they're like really specialized and they have this like clip that holds everything right in place yeah. but i was able to do it on the cobra it just wasn't it doesn't feel like fail safe you know what i mean <laughs> yeah yeah I always wondered like what kind of equipment they have. I mean, that that's exactly what we were talking about before. Like you, you specialize in certain types of work and then yeah. you have the specific equipment that you need to 
to do it. So like you see a boot company and they're going to have all these post beds and like really specific um, machines for that type of work. So it really does make sense to kind of specialize at what you do and then, you know, get help for the stuff that you don't have. But um, yeah, I'd be so intrigued to see their factory and see how do you do you think you'd ever do like a video tour of the factory i think you've done a little bit of it haven't you we did a little we did yeah, some photos we did some pictures i don't yeah. think we took video no but i'm sure we'll end up back there again oh, sure. so i'm sure Not that far. cool to see I don't know that we'll do like a whole like live tour but we could definitely do some videos of like the machines going and stuff like that yeah how far is it from you the factory uh, from here it's like an hour and a half yeah Oh, cool. That's really awesome. awesome. I want to read some of the comments before we get too deep into this. Um, we got Ready Adventure Gear said good morning from South Texas. Love Hemlock and Hyde. Their Insta Stories game is top notch. That's so true. I love seeing videos of working in the shop. Uh, and then we got Josiah. He says, whoop, whoop. This is exciting. <laughs> He's the best. Yeah, we love Josiah. He's in our little clubhouse group that uh, we all hang out in. Trevor Hill. Man, uh, Nick looks so good in the hat. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Odin says he loves these two. Um, I'm fond of that concept as well. Okay, this is Haster of Carcosa. I'm fond of that concept as well. Production, merch for profit, then occasional exploratory items. To fulfill that creative need, I'm fond of swapping out wallet and clutch interiors. Yeah, so I think everyone's on board with what you guys are doing for sure. By the way, I love your guys' setup behind you. That looks oh, so good. Is yeah. that what you do when you go to shows? or It's not. I, we did it as a display wall for when we moved here um, because I just felt like we had nowhere to display anything. Like in the old house, we had this whole yeah. shelf in it. Um, so I actually drilled like all of this freaking holes you did yeah oh. my well it looks awesome so your hard work <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> looks so good yeah and no, i love it i mean i think if we ever did do a show it'd be really cool if we could figure out a way to use these i'm sure we could make a stand or something but they're pretty, they're pretty heavy yeah <laughs> we had like a truck <laughs> we had like a uh, table system for shows yeah like three tables Oh, yeah, but we haven't done a show since 2019 because of the pandemic. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you see any coming in the near future for you, or are you gonna just keep laying low? I don't know if we have the time, to be honest. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a shame, but yeah, I like will always be like, no, we need to, we need to do it. We need to do it. You know, I like, I love doing the show. It's like hands on with the customer and getting direct feedback happens. Yeah, um, but ever I mean, since the beginning of 2020, things have just gotten so busy with you know the making that we need to do just to keep up with orders. Yeah, I that we'd be able to make enough back inventory to to justify doing a show yeah. at this point. I mean, I don't. I think like potentially in the future when you know Wes is in school or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. It's yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I I love the 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 conversations and the connections and stuff are so fun at those things. But for sure, I mean, it, yeah. If you guys are busy and you're you're killing it, I mean, I think it'd be smart to just keep doing what you're doing and stick to it. Yeah, for us, it was like it could have been could have destroyed it because yeah. because we did get a lot of our sales from doing the shows. Yeah. And we kind of were like, well, now what are we going to do? We were all like ready to go for the spring show. Yeah, and, we were all booked up. Yeah. And then we're like, okay, I guess this isn't happening anymore. Like, how are we going to reach people? And we're like, I guess let's try to go Instagram live and see how that goes. <laughs> and, and that honestly, for us kind of changed the game. Like we were already, I'd say like relatively successful, but it just skyrocketed up, skyrocketed us because like rather than you know ha having this personal connection with like, a thousand a couple thousand people that come to the show, we're now reaching whoever is out there and is following us, and they can watch it then, they can watch it later, um, and we're not only making a personal connection, but we're letting them actually into the studio and seeing how we make everything. Yeah. 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 Or it's not like we could bring, you know, I just sew everything on the machines. It's not like I could bring the machine to the show and people right. cool would walk into our booth and not even realize that we made it. They, were, they thought we were like selling someone else's stuff. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think for us, like doing the lives and and letting everyone into the studio and showing like how we do what we do is has been like huge for us. So yeah, hopefully think, it shows at some time, but I feel like it'll be, a, if we do it, maybe it'll be like one a year. <laughs> yeah. Something like that. I mean, you guys have grown so fast. You're sitting at like 20 plus thousand. You've gotten started like pretty recently, it seems like. Do you think the live streams had a lot to do with the growth? Definitely. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I think it's just like a different type of interaction. People asking questions about their different sides of the story and how, how things are made. Like, I think people are really connected to like watching things get made because they don't, maybe they don't do that themselves. Yeah. And just getting to know us, yeah. I think, too, and our family on like a more personal level, I think just only yeah. brings everybody closer to what we're doing. I mean, the leather community is amazing. Yeah. Like, oh, my gosh. You yeah. know, yeah. Just, it's so <laughs> great. And, like, some of the best people we've met. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just I'm so grateful to have that, that community. Yeah. How do you see... Do you see any overlap with that? Because, like, I know we did. I mean, that's why I started leaning into YouTube because I, from the just a couple of videos I posted right off the bat, I started noticing that like there was overlap in the people who enjoyed my like leather craft specific videos and people who were buying our products. Are you guys seeing any overlap like that? Um, we're pretty we're pretty new into YouTube. Um, we started doing. Well, well sorry. Let me let me. I I meant more of like like the leather craft community specific stuff that you're doing. Not so much like just YouTube, but like you guys are really engaged in the community with Clubhouse and like, right. um, like what windows have opened up because of that, and and how does that overlap? You can probably speak to that better. Yeah. So I mean, I think I'm trying to think like there definitely is overlap, and one thing we've really thought about doing, and honestly, it's something I want to do. I just it's all about getting the time to make it happen. Is releasing some patterns for people to purchase and download. I know you guys do that and yeah. had a lot of success and it's something we really want to do. I just literally have to like get my butt on the computer and make it happen. <laughs> um, but I can vouch for how hard, I mean, I, it, it's been one of like the most rewarding things we sell, honestly, because it's, it's so much fun to like um, have other people trying out your products and they like, you know, they get excited about it. It gets them into the, you know, gets their wheels turning. And so it's a fun thing to sell, but I can vouch for how hard it is to just sit down and do it like i've got i probably have hundreds of like just raw illustrator files that aren't tidied up yet and you know ready to sell and people are like when are you gonna put this one out when are you putting this one out and i'm just like man i i can't keep up with it but <laughs> like i'm i'm seriously considering like hiring a full-time graphics guy to just bust out patterns for us so that we can provide more value there and and like keep up with it because it's it's so rewarding and, and like, I know speaking from my point of view, I'd love to try some of your stuff out. Like one of your bags, it'd be so cool to download a pattern and, and try it out just to learn your techniques and stuff. That'd be cool. Yeah. So we do want to do And like, I'm imagining it would be kind of like, you know, a file that you would download, obviously the pattern that you could print out, but then maybe there's a YouTube video, sort of video connected to it. That can yeah. do how you do it, right? yeah. Or yeah. how we like fold our gussets or whatever it is. Um, Kit. Yeah. So that I think is something that's coming down the line that I would definitely work for crossover. The other thing that we have been doing that's been awesome is like every couple of months we're doing scrap sales. So, you know, you like working in the shop, you build up so much scrap. Yeah. And, and there's just some pieces of leather that are either too small or like not quite right. Like maybe there's like a little defect with them that you're just like, I can't use this. Well, now also with us working at such a higher capacity, we just really couldn't like keep up with the amount of scrap that we had. And it was like taking over the studio. So um, we decided to try selling it off because I mean, or originally that's how we got started, right? Like our le the leather that we started with was gifted to us. So it was going to the landfill, like someone, re you know, our friend rescued it. Um, from going there and ended up in our studio. And, and so essentially we want to be able to do the same thing, not throw that stuff out. And, and it's like, we put those boxes up on the site and within minutes they're gone. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. We, we've, yeah, we got to do that. Cause we have so many, so much, we have a lot of scraps and we just, we're always racking our brain. I mean, in, off the top of your head, you're like, I can think of things we can do with that. Like of we can course. come up with little projects, but it's like in the end, it just keeps piling up and you don't do anything with it. And, 
Yep. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's that's super smart. Yeah. Well, and that, that that's an area that that can kind of overlap with the leather craft community stuff that you're doing as well, like right. aside from just physical products. Exactly, exactly. And um, it's really fun too, because when people get their boxes, then they like are immediately making something with it and posting it on their Instagram and tagging us in it. And we're just like, oh, that's cool. So cool to like see what people like yeah. immediately make with stuff that we otherwise would have to have gotten rid of. Yeah. 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 Love that. That's cool. Yeah, so that's been that's been super awesome. And then I think honestly for me personally, just being a part of the leather community is just just like motivating and you know, there's people there to kind of like pump you up when you're just like, "Oh, what am I doing?" like or like yeah. this, right? You know, and I'm in here a lot of the times like by myself or like with a kid, you know, like with Wes like down by my feet and it's Sometimes it's hard to know when I'm just like staring at something forever if it's right or if it should change or whatever. So yeah. being part of for me it's super helpful and like makes me feel like I'm more connected to adults. <laughs> yeah, yes. for sure. That's, that's yeah. Kind of, I mean, we all we all deal with that. Like the whole like most of us are just sitting all alone in our workshops in a dark room, just kind of like brainstorming ideas. And so you miss a lot of that, like networking and connection stuff that like tech guys get like I, I have this little office space downtown that i rent sometimes because it has really fast internet and whatever but like everyone there is really collaborative and like people are moving around and like they're having you know big meetings where people come in they cater the whole thing i mean it's like really dynamic and a lot of movement and i'm like this is such a contrast for me just like sitting in my workshop with my head down getting something done yeah. so um i think we all need a little bit of that though and and that's when like you know, Clubhouse is really fun and Instagram lives. Like I love just throwing your live streams on when I'm working and knowing that I'm getting something done, but I still feel like I'm a part of something else. It's cool. Yeah, no, definitely. And that's, that's so good to hear too. Cause it's also like how we want it to feel like we want to, we want other people to feel like they can, I mean, they can do whatever, maybe clean the house or whatever, but yeah, if you're another leather worker, just like listen while we chit chat and make fun of each other. <laughs> or, yeah. That's like, that's awesome. It's so funny because at the beginning, I was like, who's going to even listen to what we're talking God, about? Yeah. Like, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely grown into something pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it really has. And not, I, I honestly, I'm always talking about this, but I really feel like not enough people are using that. I think it's like one of the strongest things you guys have for sure. As, um, I mean, outside of just your raw talent and awesome style and everything, but like, the, the, the thing that gets me to connect with you guys on more of an emotional level and um, and have that attachment is is like the personal live streams like that. You get to know your personality and um, man, and just like see how you guys work. It's so cool. Yeah. No, it's and, and I think, too, like when I work, if I'm not doing a live or something like that, I'm always listening to a podcast you know and so even that kind of makes me feel like i'm talking to someone else so if i can do that for somebody else in any way i'm like yes let's yeah. do that. <laughs> so do you have like a are you doing live streams like regularly on a schedule or is it just kind of like whenever it makes sense you just pop on yeah for a while it was kind of us well when we first started it was definitely on schedule it was like practically every single day during the beginning of the pandemic like the first three to six months yeah and then we kind of like so you know started to back off a little bit but now, so then we were doing them like whenever Wes would take a nap. Maybe one yeah. week. But now he's not nap. So. Oh no, really? He's done with naps? Done yeah, with he's done. Uh, I'm so sad. So now it's just like whenever we can. <laughs> yeah, whenever we feel like he's going to be calm for a little bit or like, I don't know, if, if that with grandma or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So maybe That's at some point though, when he does like go to school or whatever, it will we'll be able to do them regularly. Because I would love to be. Yeah, yeah. This is how it goes. This is why I don't usually jump in on these. Oh, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's being crazy. Crazy girl. <laughs> yeah, I've wondered a lot, like if consistency is really important. Like, you know, I, I've like um like with this, I was. 
I've been trying to have one up every Friday because I, I have this thing in my mind that I'm like, if it's not Friday, then people aren't going to watch or something. And then there's another part of me that's like, who cares? I just want to do as many as I can and have fun with it and not stress about it. So I'm always towing that line. Um, I think consistency helps for sure, but I don't think it's like the end all be all thing. Like, just get it off. For, con for content creation, it definitely helps. But like, I think people are so used to like watching Netflix and things whenever they want to. So I don't think that's true. Like, if it's posted somewhere, I think people will find it. But, I mean, it's not like true. I'm not waiting for 6 like, p.m. on Friday for a show anymore. Right. And that's true. I think yep. we get way more views after the fact. Yeah. Like, you know, there's however many people on a live stream, but like later, it's like, you know, a couple thousand people. Or whatever. But, yeah. Yeah, and it's hard to remember that sometimes too, because you like, you um, you know, during the live, like sometimes I'll do one and there's only like 20 people in there or whatever, or like 10 even, and I'm like, hmm, like, does anyone even listen to me? And I get the sense that I'm like, I'm just talking to myself. Yeah. And then I'll go back and look at the video later and it, you know, gets thousands of views. You're like, okay, you got to start taking the list a little more seriously, because I, sometimes I'll just be like, it's late at night, I'm a little delusional, I'm like, I don't even know what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, but I mean, people definitely come back to them and watch them and, and get tons of value out of them. Yeah. For, for you is what I'm saying. Not, not mine. <laughs> <I'm> saying, <laughs> That's not true. I definitely get value out of yours. So <laughs> I can speak for myself on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want it to sound like I was tooting my own horn there. I want, I want to hit a couple more comments that have been coming in. Um, we're so far away. I, mean, I want to move closer. Uh -oh. Yeah, sure. Like from I love Utah. He's in our little clubhouse group as well. He said, keep wearing the hat, Nick. You look good. Sorry. Trevor <laughs> says only Nick can prevent forest fires. <laughs> <laughs> These are accurate statements. Uh, let's see. Tom McCullen says, always a blessing to watch Parker and those he chats with. Thank you, Tom. Nice hat, Nick. Don't wear it in the Southwest Utah. Someone will heist it. Blessings on you all. And again, thanks. Cool. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Um, Rachel says I'm intrigued with patterns and I'm learning that the tutorial videos available to new leather crafters are not very good. I appreciate your style and your level of engagement with your audience. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, Mike Swaim says remnants are worth more than scraps. Mer worth more than scraps. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Um, and Sean Daniels here. No worries, man. I'm just glad you're here. So, um, I think it's it's cool that this uh, the hat launch kind of landed on today. That the timing worked out pretty good. Wasn't planned at all, but that kind of worked out. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. So I guess that would be like something big to plug here. If you guys um, are new to Hemlock and Hide, go check out the new hat pre-orders. Is there a limit to the pre-orders, or is it just open, wide open? It's just, it's just open. open. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's good to know. I mean, you guys. You guys are just, it seems like you're just always coming up with something new and moving and shaking. And it's, it's, um, I know sometimes, um, looks can be deceiving, but you guys seem like you're just tearing it up. It's, it's exciting to watch. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Well, what you don't know is we were naming the hats last night at like, yeah, right before launch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna name these it's like real contentious. Yeah. We went back and forth a lot. But yeah. We figured it out. Eventually. Yeah, I saw. Some. Yeah, what'd you land on? I didn't yeah, what did you land on? So this one is the Wanderer. Yeah. Oh, oh I like that. Awesome. Hi. Love it. The Harbinger. Yeah, mine's this is the, the Harbinger. 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 And what does that mean? I'm gonna sound like an idiot, but that's no. okay. He didn't know what it meant either. It's, it's like <laughs> it's like a foreshadowing of what's to come. Is like basically what it means. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah, I like that. See, and that in itself is a foreshadowing. <laughs> Of your product line. Look, that's cool. Yeah. So what's next? So what's next with like the leather craft stuff that you guys are focusing on? Do you have any big plans with products? Um, I'm trying to think. I mean, right now, just a, for us, it's just about like keeping up with orders and getting some yeah. semblance of back stock and getting through the holiday. And then we were talking about like because our collection is is kind of pretty big. Um, I think what we'll probably do is like every year we'll get rid of three bags and do three new ones or something to that. Yeah. Effect. Yeah. Um, because I, I always want to be a, one. I love to design like the designing the new thing is the fun part for me. Yeah. Baking is also fun too, but you know, it's like the new is just more fun. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, you, you just kind of move on to other things and you, yeah, you just kind of get over stuff. So I, I agree with that. Yeah, so I'm kind of thinking like 
maybe every spring we'll get rid of three and then you know add three new ones or something like that um and just kind of keep going from there other than that i think it's we're just trying to figure out is is hats our next thing i mean that's what we're trying so we'll see how it goes <laughs> yeah i mean we thought about doing like one-off colors and, oh yeah and that kind of thing yeah I actually have my eye on another color that is true there we go see <laughs> <laughs> Of hats or bags? Sorry, I missed that. Oh, oh of both, bags. But and hats. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I was referring yeah. to, yeah. Yeah, we snuck in charcoal as a color for hats last yeah, night, Yeah, so there's actually four colors. I saw it. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, that, awesome. that's killer. Yeah. Um, that's something we were, I was talking about with um, Christian of Howl and Hyde. He's, yeah. he's, they, they have a, they really like pull off that model of like, you know, they have their standard options, but then they do like seasonal stuff or collaborations that are limited at, edition their limited well, releases that, that place that he could just buy stuff by the pound oh like, my that gosh freaking nuts i would kill for that like that's yeah so cool yeah it is cool because he can just kind of like watch out for new stuff that comes in and and then it's it's working backwards because he finds a leather and he's like well what can i do with this instead of like i'm always just like starting from scratch like what do you do i mean the world the the world is your canvas like anything you know it, it almost like helps to be a little bit limited to like yeah. a specific supplier and in a way we're like that with wicked and craig i know you guys yeah. use a lot of wicked and craig as well like yeah. i love that they'll split anything down to whatever weight you want they yeah. um the only bottleneck right now is the turnaround times yeah yeah do you, do you guys have the freedom of picking it up oh uh, it's like how far are they from us like a four hour drive yeah that, we're not close enough to pick it up no I oh, okay yeah that would be awesome yeah, no, the turnaround time definitely stinks right now. And, and but it's all it's all good. Like it's great that they're getting a ton of business and you know, yeah. So it's it's a yeah. good thing. It's just, yeah, I would love it if we could get it a lot faster. <laughs> Wicked and Craig's uh, workload should be an indicator of where the leathercraft world is at right now, and it's really exciting because every time I email or call Kylie, our rep, she's like. Things are blowing up. She's like, I don't know what's going on in the leathercraft world, but everybody's ordering. I've never seen this many orders. She's yeah. like, she's like always, you know, just flying by the seat of her pants trying to make things work. So I try and allow them a little, you know, leeway of patience because I know things get crazy. Yeah. But um, it's also it's exciting. It's like, man, it's so cool that this many people are out there ordering, you know, straight from this tannery that's been around since late nineteenth century. Yeah, it's so keeping cool. it going. Yeah, what we've been doing is kind of like. We'll order from Wicket Craig and we'll also order from, from Buckle Guy just to like get yeah. leather in. <laughs> like, yeah. We do that too. We've got yeah. a box of Buckle Guy leather right here sitting here. Cause I mean, their turnaround time's fast and they keep a lot in stock. So it's really yeah. nice. It's also Wicket and Craig leather. It's just coming from two different places yeah. just to just to get it in when we can. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. You, you guys, um, I, I don't want to like embarrass you or like put you in a weird spot here but i i just i want to highlight for the people that are new to hemlock and hide your products are so perfect in my mind and you know i know everybody has different tastes and whatever but like this the style the way that you put your bags together and the way they're they're assembled the like this the style of it is what i've always tried to achieve i guess is what i'm trying to say because it's it's still like rugged it's rough around the edges you're using like vegetable tan leather which is similar to the tack and saddlery world that i've always loved but it's really refined you have like the beautiful uh you know gold foil stamping and the hardware matches and it and you use edge paint which just really like makes it look refined and finished but at the same time it's so much different from like a department store bag um it's it's a clear on the opposite end of the spectrum from that which is what makes me really love it uh, so anyway, I just want to say I love your stuff. You guys are just crushing it. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's so, so sweet to hear. I mean, you guys were a freaking huge inspiration when we first started. Like, you probably don't even, I mean, literally, when we started, Nick was like, I'm going to do research on this. He's like, look at this company I found. And it was, <laughs> oh, that's cool. Like, Thank you. Yeah. I'm like, they're yeah. so cool. And they're another, like, married couple. And, and I just, it felt like we met like our other halves somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, I love it. It it's it's been it's been tough. Like our product line, like what I really envy of you guys is like you I don't know, I, I guess um it, it can be hard. Like the way we've um taken our production out of state has 
been insanely helpful for our growth in a lot of ways, but it also limited um, like designing new products and stuff. I mean, the bottleneck of designing a new product can be like six months yeah. and um, it's really expensive and you know, you got to hit minimum quantities. There's all kinds of things that kept us from doing what you guys are doing. And also like what I was talking about with Christian, which is just like, you can design a bag and maybe make like five to 10 of them and then, and then launch them and, and keep it very like, grassroots and mm -hmm. and really close to your own style and your technique and then and then do like limited runs with that and and exactly what you guys are doing so i guess that's a big part of what i admire with you guys i i hope that you can keep like the production mostly in-house and and you know just kind of keep the model that you're doing and still be able to scale because i think it's perfect yeah i do like i do think that at some point we will have to work with a factory yeah um but I think what we've kind of thought about was yeah. like outsourcing maybe one bag or like just seeing what makes the most sense. Like, right. um, obviously working really closely with them to make sure the quality is the same. Yeah. Um, cause we do do some kind of particular things, which I feel like are part of our brand Yeah, that would need to happen no and matter who. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. We were thinking basically taking like, we have one bag for us, our Phoebe bag, which is like this circular crossbody bag is our best seller. Yeah. I love that taking one. That bag. And let, even if they just did like one color of it, you yeah. know, yeah. And, and just do like, they make that Phoebe bag in black and they make it to our standard. Some, something like that just to help us out basically. And, yeah. and make sure that we can keep up with the promise, like ship times and stuff like that. Yeah. The challenge yeah. Like, are people willing to wait six months for their bag? If they are, like, then we can we can put that off for a little bit longer. But I think, I don't think many people are willing to wait that, that long. long. Yeah, right now our lead time is like what, four to six four weeks. Four to six weeks. About. Yeah. So, yeah, I do think it is something that's probably going to have to happen eventually. In the next couple of years. Yeah, but but our plan would always be to, like, you know, when you work with a factory, you have to buy. They need dyes too, obviously, to make mm -hmm. the stuff. Our yeah, two sets of that. Yeah, to have two sets of dyes, keep one here for sure. Because if anything were to happen at the factory, we still have everything yeah. we need to make the bag ourselves. Well, it would be supplemental. It wouldn't. Probably, yeah. they wouldn't probably be the only. Right, source we for would that. still be yeah. making it. Always gonna. They would always be like a supplemental piece of it. Yeah, so I think you're in a good position to do that because you guys have like established products that that you know which ones sell well, and then you you can just kind of use them to supplement. I, I think that you'd be in a good position to do that because like yeah. for us, this is something we've always talked about is like our bags that we put into production was almost accidental. Um, and, and like we love our bags, but like, you know, the ones that we we use to, to um, we have Waterberry help us out with production are ones that we had to like, we were kind of forced to go into production with. Like, I think our that 56 briefcase we had was like a, a private label product that someone wanted. And I was like, well, if we're going to put it in, you know, get some help with for that order, then maybe we should just put it, add it to our line. And at the time I had this idea that we'd have, you know, 10, 20 different types of bags, but there was so much work that went into getting that bag dialed in, working with them, like making the pattern the way that he liked to make it. And right. um, there were just so many changes that happened. And then by the time we finally got it in our line or like, like, I'm not doing that again. And we ended up doing it again with the number 72 that we have, but it was kind of the same way, which is like, by the time we finally got into production, so much of it had changed. And um, and and by the time we got it done, I was like, I don't know if this is like the bag that I would want to have represented as our bread and butter of a product. And so um, now we're kind of pigeonholed into it and we keep producing it because we already have dyes made. And and so that, that's, that's one reason we're really excited to have Michael in the shop helping us out because we're going to have him like focused on more like smaller runs, doing things like you do where you, you know, you get to design it and produce it right in house. But, um, you know, if we had something that just went bonkers and we wanted to keep producing it, we knew it was consistent, then then we do what you're talking about, you know, which is finally go through the process of like having a, a factory help you out. Yeah. And when I when I were I used to work in textiles before and I know like I think assembling a bag is even a crazier long process but we used to have to send out like tech packs and things like that yeah degrees for other stuff and like 
I just remember being so stressed out and making sure, trying to make sure every single little thing on there is exactly right so they don't screw it up. Yeah, they're going to do exactly what's in the, <clears throat> in the tech pack. So yeah, it better so you be right. Better get it right. Yeah. And, yeah, and it yeah. must have been harder then because you were working with factories that were over. This was not with us, but you know, when I worked in textiles, we were working with factories overseas and there was like a language barrier too. So it was even more stressful. So yeah, I already knew kind of like the amount of time and work it takes to get that right and how long it can take to for it to finally get to you that I was like, yeah, let's not do that until we absolutely have to because that is a whole other process. <laughs> yeah. And you and you gotta be confident in your design too. Like I would hope that you guys could could do that with your product. So like if you take it to a factory, make sure if they're changing anything, it's not changing anything beyond like what you would want it to look like or do you know like a lot of times they'll change little pieces of the pattern to like help in the in the production but yeah but um yeah you got to really stick to your guns and and keep it your design right yeah for sure i want to answer trevor's question here at the end he says what is the best and worst thing about being a couple in marriage and business for both of you so right. let's hear it from you guys first what's a good thing the best that i feel like the best is almost easier for me to answer i feel like so we know each other's strengths and weaknesses really, really well. And luckily, we happen to fill each other's weaknesses with our strengths. Yeah. So for us, that works great. Like Nick is incredibly business minded and like can understand. I love a good spreadsheet. He freaking loves spreadsheets <laughs> and graphs. And like he likes to do our taxes. I'm like, yeah, that's crazy to me. No, oh, man. <laughs> It's a puzzle. Come on. I want nothing like that. So I am like so incredibly grateful that he enjoys doing the stuff that I don't like doing. Yeah. Um, and I think vice versa. Um, but Nick is also super creative. And so he can still help me on the creative end, especially when I'm designing something new and I need feedback. Um, he's still there with that creative mind to be able to give me that feedback. So and the hardest thing, I don't know. Like any partnership, like you have to be really honest. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. you, like you don't want to hurt, you, the other you wanna, you yeah. hurt someone's feelings, but like you also might want to do something that I don't want to do, but I have yeah. to just go, all right, we're going to do that anyway. And see so what right. happens yeah. and vice versa. So, yeah. Sometimes you have to fight for like what it is you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. But I, I feel like for the most part for us, it's been a positive. Yeah. If it wasn't, good, if it wasn't working, I don't think that we'd be able to even and no, I wouldn't have. I would have literally, if I were on my own and I had made the first bags that I had made, I never would have turned it into a business ever. Because yeah. Nick was Nick was the one who was like, looked at me, was like, I feel like we could turn this into a business. And I was like, okay. And he just, and I, one, I like trusted him. That like, if he thinks we can make it into a business, we can. And yeah. two, I know he's going to take it and make it into a business. <laughs> and all I have to do is make the stuff. <laughs> yeah. You just get to be creative and have fun. Yeah. With it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I feel like I'm the Nick in the relationship and he's the Leah. Yeah, because yep. <laughs> yeah, I I'm not as business minded, um, but I definitely like a good spreadsheet too. <laughs> and but I am creative too, but he's like the most he's more creative, and so I feel like we do like kind of fill each other void. What is what is it? Yeah. Is that the word? Yeah. Like yeah. what we're not good at, and I feel like it works out really good and I really enjoyed being with him. So like being in business together works out. Like I feel like some couples yeah, need that space apart and then their relationship thrives better, but I want to be with him all the time. So like, yep. Yeah. It depends on the relationship for sure. I always hear people say that, like I could never work with my spouse and I'm yeah. like, I'm like, well, I like my spouse. I actually yeah. enjoy it. <laughs> fact, we have this exact same conversation <laughs> all the time. We're like, I don't, that's kind of scary. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we like being together. I mean, most of it's everyone needs alone space, time, but, like, but yeah. yeah, you gotta enjoy each other. Yeah, That's true. yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, we're still like we're trying to figure out how to make it so that we can actually work together more because we Same. we definitely have like established roles right now, and it's really hard to balance that. Like, if one of us is out here working in the shop, the other one needs to be in like making sure Indy gets to school and like all the you know dentist appointments and all that kind of stuff. So. We, we try and establish those roles and sometimes they swap, but we're trying to do a better job at like swapping them more often and balancing it. Cause so far it's mostly been weighted towards me being out here working right. and her, 
you know, taking care of things at home. And so um, it's a hard balance though. It's really hard because it is so hard. I know that if I had her full time out here, like 40 hours a week, this business would be in a whole different place. It would be, it'd be insane. So well, when we get our minds together, we just like, like when we get in the car, we just start going crazy. Yeah, like we, both talking and figuring out all these things. Our date like, nights are like business strategy sessions. We're like, <laughs> this, this, oh, this would be amazing. We got to start making a list. And we like get our phones out and we're like writing this all down. And then we jump into the week and we just like forget it all. But yeah. if we were doing it on a regular basis, I think it would honestly work out well. So I, I usually recommend, you know, the, the marriage business partner thing, as long as you have the right relationship for it. Yeah, and I Some agree. Some yeah. need space. Oh. So they must be the relationship where they need a little space. Yeah. And that's good too. Whatever works. Oh, for sure. Yeah. What's negative? About well, it's great to have someone. Sometimes she'll get way too into something and like yeah. she'll get so frustrated because she's just, she just wants to solve the problem. And I'm like, you got to take a step back from that. Like, and then yeah. do something else and then come back to it. And like, you know <laughs> that, but sometimes I think you need someone to help. You need the person there who's like kind of looking out for you essentially yeah. to be like, all right, yeah. take a set. Yeah. yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. It's so funny when you guys talk, I'm like, it's just opposite switch. <laughs> yeah. like, that's how it is if I can too. Yep. Yeah, it helps. We all get these like irrational concerns in our minds that we stress out about like Definitely. we both do that a lot and then just like sometimes venting it out or you realize like oh this really isn't that big of a deal or i'm just overstressing it so exactly um yeah i i definitely i loved it i think it's awesome we've gone through a lot of different like phases where we've worked together a lot more and then but like just the other day like last week we were doing all kinds of content together like filming her shipping stuff and i'm like if we were doing this every day, it would be amazing. But it, yeah, it, that's literally, they say the same yeah. exact thing, like all the time. Yeah. Like, just do this. Like we'll send, you know, Wes over to his grandpa's house for the day. And it's like, oh, like yeah. us, and we're just like, oh, it's What's first happening? of all, it's so quiet. But <laughs> second, like, we yeah. just get so much done. And Nick and I are like, man, just think when he goes to school, how much we could do. <laughs> like, yeah. I know. Yeah. Have you ever considered, like we've talked um, about this. Have you ever thought about doing like a nanny, like a full full-time nanny or something yeah i mean it's just expensive it's just yeah it's yeah. it feels like the price of that would be so similar you know what i mean like one one paycheck goes out the window for the other thing yeah yeah it, it's hard i don't know because like sometimes i question that though because like we get so much done when we're together and we keep each other accountable we actually like I, I can feel the business growing when we're like jiving and working together, but it happens so rarely that, you know, so sometimes I wonder, I'm like, maybe if we kind of bit the bullet, hired a nanny, yeah. and even if it was like two or three times a week, yeah, um, a lot more done. I wonder if the business would grow enough grow to enough justify that. that. Yeah, that's, that's really, that's, that's, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's just like outsourcing like any other type of business, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> just don't don't say that to anybody yeah what would you say the worst thing is? the yeah. worst thing the worst. oh yeah um i don't know honestly i'm not trying to be like a chummy like oh everything's special with you i just <laughs> I, I really can't think of a negative aspect of it. Maybe if we really were together like 40 hours a week, we'd maybe we'd get on each other's nerves a little bit, but yeah. I, we haven't gotten to that yet. You know, we, we love working together. So I, I don't know. Yeah. And I feel the same way. I mean, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Nick texted yeah. me once and said he really yes. no, can't stand no. you. No. It's, it's so exciting when we can get together and like, and talk business and like, just move stuff forward yeah talk yeah. about the future it's just really exciting definitely i love that time yeah 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 oh hey trevor says parker why don't you just have michael watch the kids are you down for that i don't think i'm qualified <laughs> <laughs> he's not qualified qualifications raquel renee says hi everybody i love this well we love you being here thank you um Hey, why don't you guys talk a little bit about Clubhouse? Like, has that had any, I'm just curious what your thoughts are on it. I've gone in and out a lot with it. I love it when I'm doing it, but it's really hard for me to justify the time. Yeah. Like what's the relationship with it at this point? Is it valuable to you? I 
think it's cool because you get to just see where other people are at in their business and just have conversations about like this kind of stuff. Like what's your, yeah. reality? like, what are you working on? Like right. and all that stuff. Um, and it's kind of just like, it's like a podcast where you're not, you're not alone. Like it's something. Yeah. Really that I can, like then people can actually talk back to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd say like overall it's a positive and, and like, like I said before, like, you know, when you get self doubt or whatever, and like Nick's at work and I don't have another adult I can go like talk to or ask unless I want to like maybe FaceTime my mom or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. nice to have other leather workers that are in a similar, you know, environment and, and get feedback from them. Um, also for us, it's been super helpful because one of the guys in there, Matthew um, from Matteo Mateo, he yeah. has helped us so much with like, getting new yeah. machines he helped us get our edge painting machine or he sold us his really oh that's cool yeah and and like i remember the one day i was having this issue with every time i was doing like a a 90 degree corner on a pocket when i would turn it every time the stupid stitch would pop up and i couldn't like figure out and he like told me he's like oh try this and of course it worked immediately yeah. like, all right this is awesome so I would say overall, it's super positive. I feel like for me, honestly, the only negative is I can get really sucked into it. And I'm definitely like the type of person that's a people pleaser. And it's it gets down to the point where I you feel can't I can't leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I feel bad I need to tell them I'm leaving. But like they probably don't yeah, even care fine. if I just like jump off. But yeah, I, always, yeah. I feel badly and like you know, because Wes is typically here all the time, there's a lot of times where I really just have to leave and I'm just like, ah, what do I do? But yeah, that's, that's, and that's like a personal problem. That's nothing to really do. with. Class. I agree with that. Yeah. And I probably haven't been quite as polite. Cause like the way I've always thought of it is just like, it's this open room. You can kind of jump into the conversation if you want or jump out. And like, I, I usually, you know, there's, there's times where like I jump in when I can. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I'm at Jimmy John's ordering food or something and I got to like hurry and jump out because it, like it, it gets really tricky or like there's that one time um, Matthew had a, uh, Oh no, I forgot his name. The guy that runs a factory in New York. What was his oh, name? Yeah. Alex, I, think. I forget his name too, but I know you're talking about it. Yeah. yeah. And Matt, Matt, what well, like he, Matthew was like, Hey, jump in with me. I was like, I'd love to. And I was listening all morning, loving it. And yeah. I was like, I had to run to, to a gas station really quick. And then like the very moment that Matthew was like, Hey Parker, what are your thoughts on this? I was literally in the bathroom standing at the urinal and it's, it's things like that where I was like, there's, there's a few like really difficult things with that app. It's not quite as like passive in the podcast that so you can just be, you know, like I'll listen to podcasts just all day and I just get lost in them. And I love that about it. Um, but clubhouse really sucks your time. And that's one of the, biggest challenges I think is like I want to be doing it while I work but then you got to like have your finger on the microphone and like constantly you jump in and out. constantly by you yeah I agree yeah there needs to be a way to notify people like that you're just actively listening and not participating yes right I agree I think the app will probably evolve and get better over time because like I, I know people will like change their profile picture with a thing that says just listening and you know I'm like the app needs to have a feature where you can actually just yeah. check mark and have that you know, be the case whatever yeah yeah i'm just listening that would be yeah. so helpful yeah because i agree it's i really like it i love the community i feel like it's building for me and for everyone else that's on there but i do think that it's super distracting and i know i get less than when i'm on it <laughs> like, yeah yeah that that's really what it comes down to. But, yeah. but but I agree with you guys. Like the community aspect is amazing. Like we've got we've got a really cool little friendship friendship group out of that from the people that were regularly jumping on, and that was you know that's been fun. And um, I, I think that like if there was a way to keep doing it while still being able, able to get work done, yeah. like I think I would do it a lot more often because it is fun and get a lot of value. Like just like little suggestions, like you said, um, when Austin just like passively mentioned uh wawak and i was like what's wawak we yeah. like we're all googling it at the same time and we're like what is this thing i've never even heard of this and there's all these like sewing supplies and and so it's little stuff like that that like is really game changing you get a lot out of people who are in the same boat and learning different things and so i love it for that reason yeah no i totally agree with you and then there's also like the leather hour which is another clubhouse group when they're really talking about like the actual industry too and like yeah. And just talking about like 
you know, the kind of like the greenwashing that's going on with like vegan leather and all this stuff. And it's like all this information that I really actually want, but haven't been able to find. And I'm yeah. like, oh my God, you guys are so knowledgeable. Like this is. They're not posted like podcasts, are they? No. And you can't go back and listen to them, which yeah. is another thing that's super annoying. <laughs> but Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure, like you said, I'm sure that Apple will develop and get better with yeah. time, but it is, it is distracting. <laughs> yeah, it is. I know. I'm always so torn. Like when I first got onto it, I was obsessed. I was like, I, there's a lot of people yeah. who get on there and like talk about how the app can like help grow your network and your business and whatever. And I was listening to a lot of those like outside of the leather world. Yeah. And I was so fascinated with how people were using it. Like they were like yeah. the way they were like plugging their businesses, but keeping it really natural. And, um, you know, you're able to get on there and ask questions in a very natural way without, you know, like email. I rarely answer my email questions because I just don't have time to just sit down and answer all of them. But um, like for some reason, sitting on a clubhouse while I'm working, being able to like answer those questions made it a lot easier and fun and dynamic and you get to know people. And so there's a lot of value to it. But I, I guess we should say for people who don't don't know, the uh, clubhouse is an app out there that it's all audio. So it basically opens up these rooms where you can jump in and um, just have an open like phone call conversation with multiple people. And um, there's a definite like little leather community club that we all jump into every now and then. I've been um, missing it a lot lately, though. I, I, I just have been it's, it's like you said, it's just hard to get things done when you're on it. But it is fun to be a part of. Yeah, for sure. Um, let me see. We got. Um, yeah, Alex is the guy from Manhattan. Steph reminded yeah. me of that. I, I, I think I said Alex. I, I knew I was close. Um, let's see. Do either of you have future plans to add carved or tooled items or is that too close to the bespoke business model? What do you guys think? I don't, I don't think that we do. No. Unless you disagree, but I just think that that's a totally different design aesthetic. and like aesthetic. And yeah. Everything. I don't know that. I'm sure there's a way to do it that would fit our aesthetic, but it's also just like the time. It's so time consuming to do that sort of stuff. I just don't think we'd be able to keep up with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to see a sustainable business model where you're constantly tooling. It's it's hard to imagine that. But it also has to fit your your brand. You know, I, I agree with you. I think that it's never really been something I've wanted to focus on, although I love doing it and playing around with it. Like I've played around with it just a little bit and I it is kind of fun. I feel like I'm getting in touch with my, you know, Western tack roots a little bit. But um, yeah, I, just, I don't see us like ever doing it as like a regular part of our business. Actually, yeah. I don't think we've ever gotten that question before. Like people mm -hmm. haven't asked us for tooling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But have you guys, uh, Leanne, I feel like you might have seen them. Have you, or maybe we talked about it. Have you ever followed um, Animal Handmade? Yes, yes. Her I stuff was, is so cool. Her stuff is amazing. And like, that's why I was actually exactly who I was thinking of. I was like, yeah. but that would totally be my style if I was gonna do it. I don't right. understand fully how she's doing it. Like in my mind, I almost think she's getting like a giant plate made or something. That's what I wondered too. It's so funny you say that. I've all it's racked my I've racked my brain on this yeah. so many times because it's it's actually debossed. It's not embossed, and then right. which means it has to be like a full plate, like you're saying. Yeah. But she has so many different sizes and designs. Like I can't imagine she's investing in that many dyes. But I don't know. It's it's amazing what she does. So you're saying it's coming out from the leather. Is that right? Right. So like, which means everything outside of the design had to be part of the die because it's pushing like the whole piece of the pattern down and then leaving the design up, oh, which it. means, like you said, I think it's a big plate or something, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe Both she's on. got like connections to someone that can make plates for like cheap or something. Yeah, yeah. maybe. I got to see her stuff in person. Oh, um, really? Yeah, yeah. We went to, what's that? Field, Field and Supply. There's, oh, cool. Yeah, there's a show in, in New York, like a maker show called Field and Supply, and we got to go. It's a show that we were considering doing. I actually think if we were going to do any show at some point in the future, it'd be that one. But so we checked it out uh, 2019, and they were there, and I got to see her stuff in person. It was, it was beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Did you talk to her at all, or...? Uh, not really. We were. It was like crazy crowded, and we had West yeah. too, and like friends and stuff. So I was just kind of like poking around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, we need to get into some shows like that. I don't know. I've always had kind of a negative attitude about shows, but I think that they're so valuable. 
I've had a thought on like one way actually that we could do it. I would, I was talking to the one, the woman that we work with who runs one of the shows that we do that's like in Philly more um, about like, because at Field and Supply, it seemed like a lot of people were doing this where they show up and they have, let's say they have 20 bag designs. They have all their designs in every color possible there with them. And you can see them and touch them and feel them and try them on. And then you place an order. So oh, yeah. yeah. Walking away with something. So you don't necessarily have to have like, you don't have to bring a bunch of collection. stuff with you. Yeah, you and just have up. one of each and then you go back and make the order. You tell them like however long it'll probably take to get there. Yeah, yeah. that's smart. That Because then you're not putting your whole inventory in jeopardy too. And that's the other thing. Because you know when you do a show, especially if you have anything Wind like... Or rain. Yeah, wind or rain, yeah. and then sunlight too. Like you yeah. Yeah. and people with dirty hands. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, I got nervous. We did. We've only done a handful of shows, but that Sundance Harvest Market, we had like kids coming up and grabbing stuff out of the little buckets we had, and like, um, anytime like somebody came into the booth, I'd get nervous because like yeah. they'd be holding coffee or something. I'm like, something's gonna spill. Like I, yeah. I don't know. I just I. I people don't realize like you could have tens of thousands of dollars worth of inventory sitting in that little tent exactly. and um, something as minor as just the sun baking down on it can completely change it and, and force you to have to discount it or something. So well, um, at that time, that was like all our inventory we had. Yeah. We brought yeah. everything. So like, yeah. there That's wasn't exactly what we've done before. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you have is what you've got, <laughs> like what we've made. Yeah. 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 Yep. So I, I think having like a demo piece is really smart. Just have like one of each thing out and then take orders from there. Yeah. So I think maybe we would try it that way if we if we ended up doing another one. Yeah, we did that with like the belts. We had just ones they could try on and then they could order it at the last mm -hmm. one of the shows we did. That's what we yeah, did. Yeah, that worked out pretty well. So we didn't have to have a ton of every size and color. So it worked out. And they can figure out their belt size right down there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How do you guys like... Do you guys still sell belts now? We started again the okay. last year, but we didn't for like four years. Yeah. Because the headache is yeah. Yeah, sizing. That's why yeah. we stopped, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then Nick like found in the drawer, he was like going through all our hardware and he found all these, these buckles. buckles and he's like, oh, should I make belts again? And I was like, uh, if you want to. <laughs> It's so hard. The guy to talk to would be Odin. I, I, I'm yeah. mad that I forgot to ask him about that in our live stream, but he, he, I know he does a lot of belts. But yeah, we changed ours up quite a bit too. Like we made it, we simplified them like crazy. We just use like nine to 10 ounce single layer. We yeah. don't even burnish or bevel. We just basically, you know, wrap the belt around a buckle, throw some rivets in and sell it. And, yeah. and I like that because it's it's rugged, it's simple. I, and that's usually how that's I like how I stuff. Like but it. Yeah, but it also like eliminates a lot of the risk. Like if I spend, you know, an entire day on a belt and we're like stitching it and burnishing and, yeah. you know, and I'll, and then they, the customer comes back and says it's too small, make me another one that's just a quarter of an inch small, you know, bigger or whatever. I'm like, that kind of stuff drives me crazy. Cause a lot of times the customer wants that middle hole to be in the perfect spot. Like they yep. won't be happy if it's, the hole next to the middle one or something. Yeah. And so then we had end up, you know, making two or three belts for every one belt order and it's expensive. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's super smart doing it that way where you're just like cutting it and yeah. Yeah. I've even had people like, I told them exactly how to measure and it still doesn't work. No, so I don't know. It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they don't. Here, people here. Will, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. That it's funny cool. though. We, we go through phases. Like we haven't had any returns too recently have we yeah it, i don't know we kind of figured out this thing it doesn't make sense but just how we size them and it seems to work for the most part yeah and it's just from a lot of trial and error from like selling them before yeah. but like i hated like the customer service side of that too and like shipping it three times because then they have to ship it back so like it just became really expensive and wasn't like profitable so it feels like but, it wins <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's gotten better this last time and it kind of held us over during like, like it was a good product for us to have yeah. just, like, the last year and yeah, for sure. the pandemic and stuff. So, yeah. We have a lot of heavyweight leather too. Like I'm always thinking we should just cut that up, make it, make some belts. Yeah. Um, Trevor said he has a sizing belt that he brings to shows. People try that on. Then I hand them their size and color rolled up in package. That's cool. 
Our heat yeah. just kicked on, so sorry for any noise. Oh, no worries. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> what? What are you talking um are you guys do you guys have like a setup that you can like move around like smith um shane from smith showed us the workspace that he had and that was pretty cool oh yeah we could do that. that be okay or no yeah. yeah are you doing it on your phone yeah i'm always curious because it, yeah it's, it's worked out really well and the picture's yeah, good it looks good i always feel like i gotta have like my professional camera set up but we should just do this on our phone. Do you want to take them for the tour and I'll just real quick make Wes lunch? Yeah. Do you want to do the opposite? Yeah. Here, I'll make lunch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> make, he's going to make Wes lunch. Okay. Funny. Let's see. All right. Um, first, keep in mind, we did not clean up for this at all. And I feel like our space. Well, I love that. I would think that's awesome. <laughs> our space is like always kind of a, on the verge of being a disaster. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it has That's how to it should be. Like be. It's a workshop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, is there a way to turn it around or no? I guess not. I don't know. I love those cork boards you have up there. What are they? Pegboards? Oh, pegboards, yeah. yes. Yeah, that looks awesome. Yeah, Nick just hung those the other day. I'm sorry. And it's like backwards, too. It's so confusing. Nick hung those yes. the other day to make space because most of our, we had most of our um, guys on this other one over here. And they okay. were just like on top of each other. Yeah. So yeah, he just put those up the other day. See, you can see actually the belts. Where did they? There we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. Found those those buckles the other day, and was like, I'm gonna make belts. I was like, Oh god, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay, this is our Juki Serger. So if you guys don't know, before or when we first started, we were doing leather, and we were also doing a lot of wax canvas. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, and so just with like the leather for us took off way more than the wax canvas did. So we kind of dropped doing the wax canvas. Um, it, and also it was more of like Nick's kind of project than it was mine. Um, and he, and he's just like so busy with his regular job that for him, he just couldn't keep up with it. So we still have the surgery because I use it for like random stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I maybe one day we'll sell it if it makes sense but yeah for now it's still here um this is just like a home regular home machine oh yeah like the, actually what i what we very first started on because it's like a it's like a quote unquote industrial machine but it's definitely not like you could you could hem your jeans with it i feel like that's oh yeah 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 um and then this is the console see you know you're a real uh maker when you've got sewing machines on top of sewing machines <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's good yeah and then this one oop, where there we go class 26 class 26 i really like, can't figure this out here we go <laughs> yeah so this is the main machine um i put like there's some like funny bolts on here that i i made this like canvas sleeve to put on there and then i've got like tape on the bottom people always ask me what that's about yeah it's just to be extra safe that nothing gets scratched up yeah um yeah this thing has been amazing since we've got it i don't think we've other than like oh it's time to oil it oh it's time to change the needle i don't think we've had a single problem with it yeah that's good to hear because i actually recommend that machine a lot and yeah. i've never owned one but i've owned the same class of the texo i just love the cobras because of the brushless motor that it comes with yeah and so i mean i've it's good to hear that you guys like it yeah no i love this machine and i I love that the 26 because it just you're getting like such a range of like weights that you can sew. Um, you can get pretty thin and pretty thick and I feel like it covers anything that I would want to do. So, yeah. Yeah. So then this is our bottle jack press. Oh, yeah. So we use this to, you know, click out all the clicker dies that you saw over there. Um, but there might be some secret thing coming in the mail very soon. Oh, yeah. Is it? <laughs> Is it hydraulic? Is the secret thing hydraulic? It's not Our hydraulic. Secret? I don't think we could get that down the stairs. That's the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that it's was our biggest thing because we're in a basement. It's like a way better setup than our old house, but you still have to get it down like eight steps or something like that. And they're wooden and I just don't feel overly confident that they could hold that crazy yeah. hydraulic press. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so is it the... 
well, I guess it's secret. You don't want to tell me, but I was going to say, we, I've been considering getting the big Weaver press. We, we have the mighty wonder, but I've been thinking about getting the bigger one because um, I don't know how soon we're going to be moving shops at this point. We keep going back and forth. And so I'm like, maybe I should just get one of those to hold us over until we can get a hydraulic one. But yeah, um, yeah we might be <laughs> using the same stuff. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Nick will be mad if I say it now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What's that thing behind you? The, oh, no, no, oh yeah, there's your MP burnisher. Yep, is our burnisher. So sanding side, burnishing side. This thing's also. I think we always go back and forth if it was this or if it was the, um, Cobra that we bought first. Um, but one of these two machines we bought was our very first purchase, and they're still, still going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think what the other thing was that you were looking at. Well the, well, the white thing that's on that workbench behind you, the other, other way. Other way. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, right yeah. Right. Yes. Oh, that's your edge painter. Yeah, this is the edge painter. Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I. It, what's interesting, though, I found is that, like, different colors do better than other colors. Like, black does great. Brown does pretty good. I feel like our olive doesn't do as well. Like, it takes a little bit more skill to get it quite right. Really? <laughs> but it does. <sighs> I, it just must be like the consistency with the paint or something like that. But it has saves us so much stinking time because yeah. edge paint, all of our straps, like we're only using it for straps right now. But um, what we'll do is we'll look at like, you know, 30 orders or something and be like, all right, um, we, we need this many straps. And then I'm also making back inventory at the same time. So we'll do like a day of black straps and we just cut them all out and then paint them together. It's like a two person job. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, one person's edge painting, and the other person has a heat gun drying them, so you can turn them over into the next side. Yeah, but it's it saves us a ton of time, so that's awesome. Yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, and then this is our quick print um, gold foil. I mean, it's a hot press; you can uh, stamp with it, or we use we use it mostly for gold foil. But do you like that one? Oh yeah, yeah, it's great. I haven't had any issues with it or anything it definitely took us a while to figure out like what temperature it needed to be at for us yeah. um yeah it's been it's been great we actually bought this from an embroidery shop they had had it and they just hated doing it so they're like we're not gonna do this anymore and for them i think it was hard because they were doing all different types of materials but because we're just using pretty much bridal leather from Wick and Craig and it's pretty much always the same weight and yeah we, you know we only have like one setting we really need it to be at so well don't you you guys use some skirting don't you or are you doing all bridal mostly it's all bridal yeah oh yeah that's nice you don't have to mess with it then yeah once in a while we'll have harness like the milled is harness I think other everything else is bridal yeah are you guys getting like a weird buzz every time I'm getting a stupid notification? It's like, <laughs> I didn't notice. I didn't okay. notice you. Yeah, so then it's just like a mess over here. Um, yeah, and then this is, I'm going to just turn it around and show you guys this way. This is our like display wall. Yeah, I love the wall. It looks so good. We have such similar style because we have our stuff down in um, the downtown store where he works. What oh yeah. Yeah, I just have a desk space and down there to the, edit. The display I sent him was just like that. Yeah. It's so it, funny. It I can good. show you guys how I did it. It was super inexpensive. Although wood right now you guys know is like oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, the natural wood is a really good contrast for the leather colors. Yeah, I think that's I love why that. I love that. Yeah, that yeah for sure. We got this bit. I don't Nick moved all the Nick moved all the tools the other day. So not like the regular wood tool so i probably won't be able to find it now but um rockler sells this bit because we don't have a drill press but it sells this bit it's like a circle and you can stick it on any regular hand drill and it basically like stabilizes the drill and as so we use the fastener bit oh that's cool and it just creates basically like you have essentially a, like, a drill press drill press yeah yeah, yeah. And it was like 16 bucks or something that's awesome it looks so good Nice. So, yeah, so my arm definitely hurt really bad, but <laughs> I got it. Uh, let's see. That had to be worth it. Yeah, there's a bunch of leather. Ready to go. Yeah, that looks nice. Sweet. See, you say yours is messy. It looks awesome. Oh, no, no. There's well organized. Oh, geez. 
There's a ton on the floor too. <laughs> that looks like a huge basement. It is. It was one of the main reasons why we decided to buy this house. Yeah. That's that's cool. so nice. It's yeah. perfect. It's it's like more than double the size of our basement when we were in Philly. Yeah. Um, and it was the cellar. Like when we walked through the house, we were so excited. We were like, this could be it. And then we went down the basement, like, this is it. <laughs> oh, that's so that's fun. sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. And then let's see. Something like that. Can you be like the camera person? Yeah. He's back. I'm really bad at getting this right. Um, so this is what we like to call the pound station. Oh yeah. <laughs> Man, this this got graphic quick. <laughs> So it doubles where, as a hat area. Yeah, it's like this okay, that's why I was wondering about your hats too. At the same time, got our um, rivet setter. Nick made like a stirrup for me so that I can just use my foot. Oh, is, sweet! Oh my yeah. gosh, that's awesome. Um, so my shoulders start hurting. Yeah. Well, I could never get enough leverage. I would have to stand on top of like a stool to get. It's <laughs> our further boost. Yeah. That's oh cool. yeah. Got hats on it. Just full of hats. Yeah, I liked the stop motion you guys did recently for the hats, where it was like turning around and then it would change colors. Yeah, oh, yeah. so much fun. Nick loves doing that. <laughs> and do you, was, oh yeah, do you focus on like content every day, or do you have like a day and you're like, let's get as much content on this day, or is it just kind of like a daily thing? Um, That's all for you. The way I think about it is like whenever I'm inspired to do it, I do it. That's yeah. not like a great answer, but <laughs> no, that is because when you're feeling it, you're like more creative and you can get a lot more done. Yeah. Like, yeah. and if you force something, it just it never lands, right? It, yeah. Or it always I, seems weird, so it's just like don't don't force it. Yeah. Or yeah. I like seriously mess up whatever it is I'm trying to make because yeah. I'm like stressed out that I'm killing myself. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Definitely yeah. don't have. I think you're you're pretty regular about posting stuff, but yeah. when you're feeling inspired, well, you take a lot. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But if you don't have something to say, like you don't have something to say. So like you can't just say, oh, yeah. it's Monday. <laughs> like, people don't respond to that. Although that's basically <laughs> how my lives go. <laughs> so, is Nick, so Nick, are you the main social media guy? Like are you running Instagram mostly? Yeah, I'm the social media guy. Oh, that's cool. Okay, I didn't know that. I think I always imagined it was Leanne. Oh no, that's it's on purpose. Definitely not. That's Is it? <laughs> no, that's true. It's 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 trying to have a cohesive brand voice. So I always think of yeah. I'm talking through you. Oh, okay. Oh, creepy. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you guys have a hard time balancing like the house remodel stuff? I know you've been doing a lot of work on you know like remodeling the, your bathroom and the. A yeah. few things like is it be, is it hard to split that between work? So I would say that this one wasn't so bad, but only because of the way. So yeah. when we moved into the house, the entire up uh, third, third, second floor, second floor. Um, that many floors. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm in the basement all the time. It feels like the ground floor. Um, the second floor is like uh, basically just one huge bedroom and a bathroom, and then there's like these two kind of like attic spaces and but and then on the main floor there's two bedrooms and a bathroom and so when we moved in we put nothing upstairs we just basically stayed in what is now the guest room and wes is in his room so we moved nothing upstairs at all so that way because we knew we wanted to renovate that and make it our space so when they came and did the whole reno it really wasn't that bad because it was fully closed off like there's a door to go upstairs also um, so I feel like we had to update the electrical in the house that was and I feel like worse. that was worse just because yeah. they were all over the house and not like in a confined space. Yeah. Like they, yeah. they went upstairs to do upstairs and that was kind of it. Yeah. That, that sucked, but we weren't fully open. like, or no, we were open. Yeah. Because when we first yeah, we moved in, they, we had the electrician, we had to rewire the entire house. It was all knob and tube. So we had the electrician come in and just get the basement set up first. That was our goal. Like, yeah get that running so we can run all our machines and everything. Um, and then like a couple months later, they came back to do the rest of the house. So that sucked because they had to be down here a lot too, which I didn't think about, but they're running everything oh, yeah. in a box. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's like, hard. Floor and stuff that, that was. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we like when I was planning for this year, I feel like I cramped way too much into it. For 2021. For 20, yeah. For yeah. 2021. Um, 
sometimes it gets overwhelming, but I think afterwards it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, once you get through it, it's definitely worth it, but it was stressful. Yeah. I'm glad the upstairs is over. And now we have like a sanctuary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it looks so good from the pictures that I've seen. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's nice too because like Wes just, we only have the only bathtub in the house is up there. So he goes up there for bath time. But other than that, he's never up there. So it's really like, there's no toy, like nothing gets in there. Then I'm like, it's our sanctuary up there. Yeah. yeah, that's so cool. Are you guys paused on home renos? Are you guys yeah. good? That's yeah, awesome. I think we're good for now. <laughs> yeah. We're still like getting quotes on stuff just to like price out what we might want to do next. But I'd say yeah. we're, on, we're on a good pause for a while. <laughs> the only thing I'm willing to do is the floors. <clears throat> for Upstairs. For, for, or, for yeah, yeah. the floor, main floor, yeah. And yeah, that'd be good. Because that's like a whole thing. Yeah, and when they do the floors, you have to like leave because all the sanding and the dust, and there's just dust forever. That's the thing. Like you're dusting for like a good couple months after right now. <laughs> yeah, it's so hard. Yeah. Uh, Dang. Well, I don't want to keep you guys too much longer, but um, this has been really fun. We love you guys. Thank you for doing this. Oh my God. Yeah, thank thanks you. For thanks for having us. I know this isn't your normal day that you do it, and I appreciate you working around our yeah, schedule. Thank you. No, nah, I was just excited to do it. it yeah, I, don't, I really don't care what day it is. Um, I, do you guys have anything? You, I, I'm guessing the hats are probably the main thing. What's What do you guys want to plug right now? Hats. Just hats. How, how <laughs> can people... That's, machine that's coming. They were trying uh, to get the, the yeah. info out of me. I mean, I might have a clicker coming soon. Woo! Just yeah. Like, you can share it. It's it's the... Um, is it, I'm going to mess it up. I think it's a 20 ton. I don't remember. I don't it's remember. the big, it's, one, it's from the big one from Weaver. Yeah. One. yeah, yeah. Like the table that's one that has comes with its own table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And everything. Yeah, yeah. I've exactly. been looking at that one too. We didn't have to like rewire anything and like get like you know a two thousand piece of equipment down these these crazy stairs. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'm super pumped to get that because that's gonna that's gonna be really efficient for me. For sure. Because right now it's just like you know doing the bottle jack like yeah. just to get it down. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm I'm blown away. You guys are still using that bottle jack one just because of how long it takes yeah. and how much you guys produce. It's crazy. A long time coming. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. If I had to do that and do everything else, I don't think. No. But Nick does all of the pretty like ninety nine percent of the cutting for me. Yeah. Oh, cool. So he uses the bottle jack and cuts everything out for me, and then I assemble it. So I. Yeah, there's no way I'd be able to do both of those things. That would be insane. Anyway, I'm very, very excited. About yeah. That. So and and we like working with Weaver has been awesome. We got that's the other tool we didn't talk about. We should go talk about it really quick. What's that? It's um we got there. What is it called, Nick? I think they call it the Easy Edger. It's, Easy it's, Edger. Yeah, it's like a four. Oh, yeah, those are cool. It's so stinking cool. Oh, yeah. If we were doing a lot more belts, I would pick oh, one. Yeah. If you're so doing belts, 100%. Yeah, so we use it for our straps. So, like, Nick will go through all of our straps that come in. We get everything pre-cut down, and he'll bevel, like, all. it does all four corners of the strap, um, and he'll bevel the whole thing for me, and I'm ready to go. I can just take it and burnish it, and I'm ready to go. Wait, who do you who do you get your – who cuts the straps? Buckle, Buckle guy. guy. So we'll oh, get really? Yeah. yeah, they have a strap cutting service, and yeah, that's pretty smart. Really, really well. For yeah, us. you can see you did strap these cutting different. takes a lot of work. Yeah, so like all these are already. Oh, I literally can't do this. There we go. They're <laughs> already. And I think we decided on the zero size. Yeah, we decided on the zero size blade because it comes with a two, I think. But... Yeah, and that was what was so awesome working with them because we really. We don't take a lot off when we bevel. Like we like to do just a minimal amount so that when we get it to the burnisher, it's like hitting all of it, you know? Yeah. And um, they worked with Nick um, to figure out what was the right size blade and they got that in there for us. And it came so quickly yeah. and their customer service was phenomenal. So they, yeah, they were super responsive. They like sent me pictures, answered all my questions. It was, it was great. Yeah. I mean, they, they understand that, you know, we're a small business and we're ordering something that's expensive yeah. and, and they are willing to like really talk you through it and get you the right machine. And so because of how that went, we were like, 
all right, if we're going to get a clicker, like this yeah. is going to be where we're going to get it from. Because I mean, for many reasons, like we said, the hydraulic press, like we just can't get down the stairs, but, um, and like the bed of that big clicker is big enough for all our dies yeah. and yeah, we have some pretty big awesome. dies. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a big deal for sure. I mean, I like that about your bag designs is that they are like a little bit on the smaller side. Cause you can get away with that. Like mm -hmm. the, the two bags that we have are, have some massive dies on them because yeah. you know, it's like the full from the back to the front flap. It's like, yeah, it's huge. 40 inches long or something. We do have some bags that are like that and I just hand cut them out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Some of those dies get expensive. Yeah. They get. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That's one good thing about Waterbury. You know, they've got a clicker press. It's like the size of a VW bus. They can cut anything <laughs> out. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It's nice. Um, but we'll let you guys go. Thank you so much again, everyone. If you don't already follow Hemlock and Hyde, please go follow them and check out the hat pre-order just opened up today. I suck at this. Are you? So good. They look awesome. Uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I can't, I can't do that. I like literally. <laughs> Give Wes a high five for me. Yeah. Tell him hi. Oh, we definitely will do the same to your kiddos. We got to figure out a day yeah. for sure, like sometime in the future where we all get together because. Oh my yes. gosh. I know. Yes, We've been sure. talking about it forever. We just got to do it. They yeah. would just have so much fun together. I feel like they would. Yeah. 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 It'd be a good time. All right, guys, get back to work. All right. I'll see you later. You Bye, guys. Okay. Bye. See ya. Um, let's see. I'm actually going to remove them. And I, I want to, um, before we end the live stream, I wanted to uh, read off a few of those names I was talking about before. I couldn't find the post, but I found it. So we've got a lot of really awesome people in the Start Selling Your Leather Work Facebook group and a lot of cool conversations going on in there too. Um, I gave a shout out to a few people last time. Um, we've got uh, Sarah Antonio from Wild Things. She's actually a good friend of ours. I love Sarah. Um, Pete Held from 100 Wolves Co. Alan Banks, Banks Leatherwork, Audrey Hawker Cottle, ABC Adornments, Bobbles and Crafts. Um, Natalie Shelby from Twin Sparrow. She's awesome. Holly Moore from Melrose. I just got to say, most of the leather people we know of are like male. So it's cool. You're reading all these like. It, it actually surprises really me. Cool. The people in the Start Selling Your Leather Work group we have, there actually is a really strong female presence in there. And just in general, there's a lot of, like the Clubhouse group we were talking about with Leanne, there's actually quite a few ladies in there. And it's it's fun. It's cool because you get a whole different perspective. Um, Matthew Hepner from Wolf Boy Leatherworks, Aid Dimberline. He's a friend of mine that I, you know, talked with a lot on Clubhouse. Um, he has some beautiful work at A. A uh, tour leather. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. A T U R leather. Tim Howley from South Shore. Jared Wilman, Guardian Leatherworks. Craig Struble from Lawrence Craig Leather. Um, we'll end it right there and name a few off uh, in a future one. But um, yeah, we love everyone in that group. It's it's like family in there. It's really cool. We get to have some good conversations. So um, uh, if you haven't checked out the Start Selling Your Leatherwork online course. You can find it on our website and it's just a course that basically goes over everything that we um, would have done differently if we were to start over because yeah, we made a lot of mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's kind of came out of demand. You just had so many emails from people asking like, I want to start selling my work, but I don't know where to begin. And so um, at this point, you know, I think we could have grown a lot faster and a lot more efficiently if we had focused on these things. So we made a course about it. So um, thank you guys for jumping on the, on the live stream. It was really fun. We love Nick and Leanne. Go follow them at Hemlock and Hyde. And we will see you guys next Friday for the next guest live stream. You got to see who it is. I don't even know, honestly. <laughs> I'd have to look at the calendar. But um, that's it for today, guys. We'll see you on the next one.